This is the very first flight with the brand new gold Flywoo 2806 motors on a 7 inch with the new Flywoo Goku 20x20 flight controller. And I'm running a Rattel camera. I just pulled a brand new one off the shelf because my Micro Eagle decided to start glitching and I'm like, eh, it's a 7 inch. Maybe I'll just trade to a new camera. This is a brand new Rattel that I picked up literally three days ago. And I, I cannot believe, I just cannot believe that damn thing glitched on me the very first flight and I have magnetic dust in all of my brand new gold motors which I love because they're gorgeous. Cadex is a company that really wants to do good things and they do make some really interesting products. I mean they're, they're uh, the HD thing, this, they're split, I can't remember that, the Tarsier camera. It is the best split camera in terms of quality and FPV view and everything. However, the user experience is terrible. There are a number of other cameras from Cadex that just have tons of issues. I mean, dust particles on the sensors, things aren't tightened, things aren't focused, things are kind of sloppy. This company has the most surprisingly unfortunate quality control that I've seen of any company in FPV, even Iashin. And for that reason, while I respect the company for the things they do, I cannot recommend a single thing from this company because of their incredibly unfortunate quality control. Had I been flying over a risky area or over the ocean or over in an area that I could not walk to, I would be SOL. I would have lost my quad or I would have hurt somebody or I would have damaged some property or I would, something would have happened. I was just fortunate that I decided to keep it safe and fly somewhere that I could just walk to the quad because I expected the camera to maybe give me problems. This is very unfortunate. I told Caddx about this problem before the camera even came out and they decided to release the camera anyways. This is a problem that a number of Chinese companies do. They don't care about feedback if it's negative. They don't pay attention to it. They just release it. Not all companies, but a lot of them. They just release it and they're like, ah, oh, we'll fix it in the next version. Ah, oh, we'll fix it in the next version. I feel like this industry and the sport, this this stuff is becoming more and more prosumer-esque and we really need our equipment to work for us, especially if I'm going to start doing any kind of production jobs. I can't look a fool on set when because my gear stopped working. Anyways, let's move forward. Uh, this is my 7-inch progression. As I've explained in the previous video, I'm doing a very lazy job of researching 7-inch, primarily because... I can't fly these things anywhere. Uh, there's almost nowhere in any close proximity to me that I can fly these things. But I'm still interested in them. I still love them. They're so fun. They're so nice and big and great. But let's first talk. I've got a lot of stuff. i got batteries. i got, uh, uh, I won't talk about the frame, but motors, batteries, and um, some other things to talk about. Anyways, let's first start with the Flywheel motors. So these are the new Flywheel motors. They are 2806.5. Yes, they're the exact same size as the Avenger motor. Do with that what you will. So let's talk about the performance first. They're 1350 kV, so they're just slightly, or at least, the, I don't know what the kV of the Avengers are. What is it, kV of the Avengers? It says 1300, so I guess they are just 50 kV higher. And the performance feels like it has a slightly more top end, just a little bit more top end. But everything else feels pretty much the same. The Avenger motors just feel somehow a little bit silkier. And I think I know why that is. <laughs> Maybe, I'm just guessing, because the Avenger motor has a 12 millimeter bearing, while the uh, Flywheel motor has an 11 millimeter bearing. Yeah, I know one millimeter shouldn't really make all, it, all that big of a difference, but what's really interesting here is that the shaft on the Flywheel motor is five millimeters, whereas the shaft on the Avenger motor is six millimeters. <laughs> so I don't think that should make a big difference because technically the ball bearings in the larger bearing with the larger shaft are smaller so they should at least feel comparable but somehow the Avenger motor feels just a tad silkier they're pretty much the same otherwise they both fly great they both control seven inch props really well um, the Thaiwu motors weigh about four and a half five grams more and they are this beautiful gold color they are really gorgeous I don't know if I'm just a dentist and I just like gold and that's why I'm saying that but they are really gorgeous motors and they're some of my favorite motors just because they're just so darn pretty. Uh, next thing let's talk about is the Flywoo Goku 20x20 flight controller. This is uh, the version with two gyros on it. So this is an F7 with the um, one gyro on board and one gyro soft mounted in this box on top. I have not tested this version. The one that's in the quad right now is the one without the 
softbox with the second gyro on top. I have no idea how it processes it. I don't know if it blends the two readings and feeds it into the flight controller to interpret by the code or if it goes into the code and beta flight does something, I have no idea. But uh, it's interesting and I'm gonna put it, I, I specifically didn't put this version in the seven inch quad because I don't really care so much about the seven inch quad. I'm gonna put this in a five inch to see if I can tell the difference between another flight controller that doesn't have the soft box on top. Um, I forgot to bring it out here, but previously I was using the Brain FPV flight controller, the 20x20 20 20, um, uh, Rad Radix, 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 in the 7 inch quad. I've tried four flight controllers in this thing. This is the same, by the way, this is the same quad that I've been testing all my 7 inch stuff on. Uh, I changed one thing recently, which I'll get to in a second, but um, I've put a bunch of flight controllers in this thing. The best flight controller that I flew in the 7 inch quad to this date was still the Helio board. The Helio, Helio 20 by 20 board flew this seven inch better than anything else with the least number of, least amount of bobble and least amount of issue compared to any flight controller I've used. Now, the bobble issue is the, is, is the, is the core problem that I have been trying to solve by testing all sorts of different motors. Of course, I'm looking for control and various other aspects as well, but let's go over all the, my progression in the bobble issue. So moving up from 24.0 anything size motors to 25.08 and above tended to give me a whole lot more control of the props or of the quad and seven inch. And then it also tended to reduce the amount of bobble happening. Now the tune, like PID tune definitely has something to do with it, but even if you get the PID tune perfect, you still get little jitters and bobbles. And so what I've tried was actually detuning it and overtuning it and looking for, I've tried so many things, tried all sorts of parameters. I've talked to developers from uh, Emu Flight, from Beta Flight, I, the Helio guys, like none of them have been able to give me the magic bullet that got rid of the stupid seven inch bobbles. Now, not all builds have that issue, but I have built like four or five seven inch quads and all but one has had that issue and I took that one apart to put the parts on this one so I could test some stuff. Anyways, uh, somebody recently told me that Betaflight 4.1 has something fixed in it that makes the bobbles go away magically. I haven't tried 4.1 on my seven inch. I'm not too keen to try it because the last time I tried 4.1 on the DJI quad, it was really awful. I don't think it's ready for even remotely close to prime time. The other thing I recently tried to try and solve or remedy the bobbles is that the uh, Helio, it's not Helio, sorry, the long range people told me that I should switch up my arms to six millimeter arms because even though the, my five millimeter arms, which I again forgot to bring out here, were um, wide and rigid and stiff and everything was great about them, they say the stiffness of six millimeters is gonna be more and you're gonna get vibrations, flex, whatever, whatever. So I redesigned my arms and surprisingly, I was able to redesign the six millimeter version of my seven inch arm for this frame to be only 0.8 grams more than, not even point, it's like 0.72 grams more than the five millimeter version. So uh, I'm gonna hit, a, hit this arm with a chamfer and that's probably gonna be the arm that comes out for the frame that is probably gonna come out next week or this week or whenever the shipment decides to arrive. Unfortunately, it did absolutely nothing for the bobble, which is just really unfortunate. I, just, I, I mean, this, this damn bobble problem just will not leave me alone. But again, I'm being very lazy about testing all this stuff because seven inch is just difficult for me to use where I am. But now let's move to batteries. So I've been trying to find a good battery for my seven inch and previously you guys have seen me running two of these pulse batteries on the seven inch or two of these GMB 11, uh, 1000 milliamp batteries on the seven inch or two of something else. And so I picked up some batteries that were 2200 milliamp because that seems to be a good number for a seven inch. And uh, yeah, super interesting findings. Let's weigh these two batteries for you. So this is the GNB 120C, which battery companies tell me there's no such thing more as even more than 70C, but whatever. 120C, 358.3 grams. Now let's measure the Infinity 2200, which says 70C, which is technically still maximum C there is. 357.3 grams. These two batteries, I mean, look at the sizes of these batteries. Look how enormous the GMB battery is compared to the Infinity battery. Sure, the Infinity battery is just a little bit longer, but it's not really that much longer. These two batteries are within one gram of each other. So how do they actually perform? Well, the GMB battery flew for a solid five and a half minutes of cruising, fast flying, whatever flying, without 
the slightest inkling of a battery voltage warning. The Infinity battery started giving me voltage warnings at 50 seconds and flew for a little under three minutes. Same capacity battery. And um, yeah, so, so I'm really surprised by that, especially since they're both within a gram of each other. So in terms of going up to seven inch and stuff, I've said this, I said this in a video a long time ago that the most, man, this is like a 60 something, like a $60 battery that I just crashed and I was really upset about crashing because of the stupid camera. In terms of performance of your quad, I said this a long, long time ago and I believe it's still today, the battery really is one of the most important factors of the performance of your quad. And it depends what kind of performance you're after, if you're after really super high end, super fast performance, or if you're after cruising, acro performance that's kind of less stressful. On a seven inch quad, if you're gonna be doing sketchy things like long range, mountain dives and things, you kind of need your battery to perform pretty well. So you may want to go for the better battery instead of saving 15, 20 bucks and going for the cheaper battery that, Infinity's not a bad brand. This is a good brand, it's a great brand, but it's definitely not as good as the GMB pack. So I haven't tried the other 2200 milliamp 6S batteries. Actually, I've tried a couple others, but I, won't, I haven't tried them side by side. But these two batteries compared to each other, obviously the GMB is drastically better. And when I did get voltage warnings, it was actually dead. Like it was legitimately dead. And when I landed, the battery went up to 3.7, 3.68 volts. So it was genuinely finished when it said it was finished, which is the best part about the battery. I also found out that running two batteries in parallel um, are, is not good, even if they are the same capacity as the bigger battery. They're not, as, not nearly as good <laughs> as the bigger battery. One big battery tends to work out better. I'll talk about these batteries in a second, but uh, another thing I wanna say is um, I'm running 6S on the seven inch because I like voltage stability. I don't feel any sag on these batteries. I think that's a very important factor, especially if you're doing like any kind of long range or risky flying at all. Um, uh, 5S with more capacity is preferred for flight time. More capacity in general tends to do better with flight time but more voltage tends to do better with voltage stability because if you drop 5%, 10% voltage on a 6S battery, it's not as drastic as dropping 5%, 10% voltage on a 4S battery. Uh, another thing I want to point out is that there are people running lithium ion batteries. I'm fully aware of that. I've been talking to them for over a year. They do incredible things with them. And they are running primarily, actually, I don't even know what, what uh, S&P they're running. I know they're running like two or three packs and two or three sets of cells in parallel, but I don't know if they're at a 4S or 5S right now these days, but I do know that they're getting well over 30 minutes on a seven inch quad and they're getting 25 minutes on a six inch quad and they're getting 20 to 25 minutes on a five inch quad with these lithium ion packs. And if you do some lithium ion research, these packs, these cells, the 2170 cell can give you like 50 amps out of this tiny little lithium ion cell. So that is insanely crazy because that is approaching a reasonable amperage for a lithium polymer battery, which is not nearly as charge dense. So typically a lithium ion pack will give you anywhere from 50, 30 to 50% more charge density. And that goes two ways because Number one, they just have a lot more capacity. Number two, they can be run to a lower voltage. So you get you know double the extra bonus capacity and they tend to weigh about the same as, as, a, as the comparable lithium polymer that you would run. Anyways, I'm gonna talk more about the lithium ions later because I have a super interesting project for the lithium ions. But uh, let's talk about these other batteries. And let's start by weighing these batteries. Okay, so this is the Pulse battery. Uh, I wasn't really gonna talk about five inch, but this is the Pulse battery. It is 187.9 grams. That's why I like this battery, because it's a small battery. I like my five inch quad light, and one under 190 sounds like a great number to me. So then uh, I had to, I broke one of my Pulse, I had four of these batteries, and these were essentially the only batteries that I would run on five inch for the past two years, like I only had four batteries that I would actually use and I would only keep charging those four batteries. And this, this pack 
has like 75 or 100 at least this is like my newest one 75 or 100 charge cycles on it and it performs fantastic so kudos to pulse however the amperage output on this battery is not nearly as good as it could be it could definitely be a little bit better so then i recently picked up the um, gmb 1000 pack and it is what a gram less 196 yeah it's it's about a gram less than the pulse pack or not a gram it's like half a gram less than the pulse pack this battery's amperage output is freaking unbelievable this thing just like its 6s version bigger version this thing does not give me voltage warnings until it's dead they both run for about the same amount of time but until but this thing does not drop voltage until it's dead like dead 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 so this is a fantastic battery in my opinion now i recently recently also got the very popular tattoo 1300 million battery which is a um it's about 10 grams more not even 10 grams more it's like seven or eight grams more it's 194.8 grams and it's supposed to be a 1300 milliamp 6s battery with a very high c rating now i haven't actually flown these batteries yet i just got them um, these are very popular with racers because it's a very cost effective battery and it's a higher high capacity battery as well but i've heard from racers that it's not actually 1300 milliamps it's more like 1050 to 1100 milliamps but i'll see i'm going to test it because i'm not doing racing i'm, I'm not doing super crazy all-out racing and so uh, maybe this will be a better battery than gmb battery but ooh, yeah didn't drop anything but for now i actually like this thousand milliamp battery the most because it's really good at dishing out the amps and i also have the gmb 1100 milliamp version and this i can't tell the difference the only difference is that the 100 milliamp the 1100 milliamp version is like 15 20 grams more and this one is 15 20 grams less so i, I my acro flying my, i'm not racing so i can't i can't really tell the difference i would use this battery i still get four or five minutes of flight time uh and then i also picked up this one I always like testing these random batteries as well. This is an Eosheen 1000 milliamp 6S battery. It's 170 grams, it's 18 grams lighter than the um, Pulse battery and the GMB battery. So I also haven't flown this one, so tell me what you guys think this battery is going to do. Is it going to perform reasonably well or is it not? Uh, I think that's all for now. Um, I prefer 4S actually on my my 6S 5 inch quads more today than ever because it's just so darn easy to fly but I still love flying the 6S stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. It'll, stay tuned. The, the FPVcycle.com is going to have a bunch of frames coming, a bunch of motors coming, and a bunch of props coming and um, I'm really looking forward to all that. So, wash your teeth. Take care. Bye.